abstracts. How many of you try to paint, or not try, how many of you paint abstracts? Um, or draw abstracts, it's not very common in drawing, I must admit. Um, but it is something that I think about quite often, and it's something that I sometimes introduce into my drawing classes. Um, and um, the idea of, of turning something into an abstract, a lot of people want to go that way. And it's really, really not as easy as it looks. I know that there's the favorite um, cliche of people walking around um, a gallery and seeing a black painting or something like that and saying, oh, my five-year-old could do that or, or a painting that looks like it's um, just got splashes on the canvas, that sort of thing. Um, so people have a preconceived idea. Uh, people who don't know anything about art have got a preconceived idea that drawing abstracts or producing an abstract work is something that's easy to do. But until you've tried it, it's actually really difficult to come up with something that is actually a pleasing design. Um, it may need to, you may want it to speak about your political feelings. You, you may want it as a response to something that is going on in your life. You may want it as a response to the weather, to the rain, or to you being in love, or, so it doesn't have to even be political. Um, so many times abstract is um, a response to something. Although I would have to say that pretty much all artwork is some sort of response to something. Um, it's at the very least a visual response um, or it's a conversation that you are having with the canvas and then the viewer has a response to that canvas as well. So the, the conversations go on from all sides. So we're going to talk a little bit more about abstract and, um, and I'm going to show you four steps, reasonably simple steps to get you going. Um, and as I said in the email, all abstract, in my opinion, and the opinion of quite a few people, I have to say, um, that I have conversations with, that I read about um, online or in books. Abstraction comes also from observation. So the fact that we live in whatever your environment is means that you, um, you're you observing that environment, whether it's um, through sound, through your eyes, um, through taste, through what's what are the other senses through feel um, feeling texture on a sculpture um, all of those sorts of things so all your senses are giving you information and so it is you can observe in those ways as well clearly as um, visual artists the word visual applies to uh, our observation um, visually um, and it also applies, obviously, to other people looking at our art visually. In this exercise that I'm going to do, we are going to take our abstraction or take our observation from photographs or from sketches. That is a, um, a work that I did in a workshop. It's fairly abstracted anyway, but I hope you can see that there's a nude and there's a, a bit of a bum in the corner there. And what I'm going to show you, this is um, Microsoft picture viewing. Okay, so on this simple program that I have, I have got a, a way of cropping it. And on your computers, um, certainly Microsoft, if you haven't got an Apple, um, Microsoft comes with this photo viewer and I'm sure Apple has got something similar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my square. I'm hoping you can see that. I can't see it until about 30 seconds later, which is my, um, my lag. So I've zoomed in to that. And uh, at the moment, I'm working with a square, I could work with I could turn it into a rectangle like that. Oh good, that's working perfectly. And 
If I turn something, uh, if I zoom in to the picture using software, just what I've got in front of me looks quite cool. I don't mind that at all. Um, if you want to go to a square, I've got an aspect ratio on the side, which enables me to go to a square. So that'll stay a square. But what I can also do is I can move the painting underneath that square. And the reason that's important is because you're going to move it until something looks like you like it. So it's very hard to put your finger on why something is working sometimes. Um, so for example, I've just put that big black blob in the middle and I don't think that works particularly well at all. So I'm going to move my painting underneath and I'm going to go, okay, do I like that? You might like that and I might not, or I might like it and you might not. What I can also do is rotate this. Does it look better like that? I actually don't think so. Does it look better like that? No, I still don't think so. So what I'm doing with the, this picture, and you can still move it around, turn it upside down. Oh, that's a pretty cool one. So I've already found an abstract from within one of my own works. And that's one of my favorite, favorite things to do. So um, this is the first step is zooming in. But I am going to show you a different way of zooming in as well. Um, this is now a photograph rather than a, um, a work that I've done. Of course, this is still digital. We use it for drawing portraits in our classes. And I zoomed in on that and mucked around with it. And I came up with that little image there. So you can do this on photographs as well. If you do this on well-known photographs and you can't see what the photograph is. So if you've changed a picture so much so that you actually can't tell what that photograph is, you are actually allowed to use that um, um, and it's not copyright. Okay, so um, just remember that. There's one of our strange Banksia plants in um, WA. For the South Africans, you wouldn't have seen that before, um, although the, the proteas obviously are quite similar. If I put my viewfinder on there, that's beginning to be a little bit um, abstract. Now, it's very simple to make one of these. You can see I've got just a, a torn envelope there, or you can grab a piece of, of uh, scrap paper. Quite simple to make yourself a viewfinder. It's really not uh, a big deal. I've just got a scissors, as you can see. Doesn't have to be exact. Doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to give you a bit of an idea okay so in fact that's about the same size as that there you go okay if you want a square one let's see if I can cut the square I suppose you could measure it I like winging it I bet you this is going to come out rectangular as well no, that's reason to be square. And in fact, going smaller and zooming in so you can't understand what's going on in there is not a bad idea either. And in fact, I'm going to use that as our idea. So, first step is zoom in. Whether you're doing it on, well, it's easier if you're doing it on your computer. But as you can see, you can do it on your photographs as well. The other thing, of course, that you can do on your computer is if you're using colored um, photographs, which most of us obviously have got colored photographs. Um, actually, I didn't include this in my list of, of things to do, which is um, turn your photograph into black and white um, if you zoom in on your computer. And we are going to actually turn it into black and white when we draw it. So we're actually going to draw a plan. We're going to draw a thumbnail. We are designing our abstract. 
based on our observations. Okay. And I'm going to turn this a little bit. Although when it comes to leaves, those leaves are going in every direction. Um, have I got another? No, but it doesn't matter. You can take any photograph and turn it upside down or turn it any which way you want. You could even turn it um, on an angle there. I suppose with leaves it doesn't make that much uh, difference. Okay, so I hope the sun on my page isn't going to bother you too much. I've got a fairly small square there because I'm just exploring. So this is your second step. And I'm going to look at the design here and I'm going to draw some of those shapes. So I would have told you to draw shapes when you're drawing um, from photographs. We've had something like this before when we've spoken about the darkest dark being number five, the lightest light being number one tone. So we're going to think about that in our design in a second as well. Now, I've actually moved it a little bit and that, that dark line is, for me, too close to being in the middle. So I'm going to turn it a little bit so that I get some more interesting patterns. So you can follow the rules of a composition. If you want to go back and have a look at that on YouTube, the rule of the thirds, the rule of thirds, um, that, that uh, applies often to abstracts as well. Or you can just do a few of these and see how they turn out. Okay, I can see that you can see what I can see. I can see, I can see, you can see. So I'm just going to plan. And this doesn't have to be exact. It needs to be a reasonable facsimile of that because the whole, the whole thing is the fact that I like that design. So the whole point is to try and establish a similar design but don't be worried if it is not perfect. And it's getting a little bit complicated in those sections. I'm not really worried because I am just drawing as it comes. And if I'm confused, which I am, I'm just going to draw another line because I'm not trying to draw reality. I'm not worried about reality. So there's a lovely little triangle there, which I suppose is very small for you to see. Hopefully you can see it. Yep, you can see it getting a bit better there. Now, I've just realized that this line here is meant to be this line here. How interesting is that? Do I like that? Do I not like it? Do I want to rub it out? Do I want to leave that in? So remember that drawing is a process. Painting is a process. Creating a work of art is a process. You don't have to stick with what you've decided. You can change it. You can go back to what you really liked. So I'm thinking, no, I actually really like what's going on here. And it's not working as well there. So maybe I will... What will I do? Maybe I'll bring that down. Am I going to bother to rub out? Mm, yes. Okay, so that's my decision. It's still not quite the same as that, but we're playing, okay? So we're finding an abstraction. We're not necessarily drawing exactly what we have there. In fact, we're not drawing what we have there, identically. You might want to be my guest. Now, is that sun bothering you? I hope not. Try and move it into the shadow. I don't remember this happening last year. And I've been doing this for about a year. Okay, so I've got a set of shapes there, which I'm quite enjoying as an abstract. It could be some sort of landscape, and it could be well, trees, it could be 
could be leaves. I can turn it around like that and say, do I prefer it like that? But I'm going to keep it just like that for the meantime so that um, I can play with the tones. And the tone number five that I'm putting in is going to be this one that attracted me in the first place. And can you see how quickly I'm just chucking it in there? So remember, this is a plan. This is not your end result. Although it could be, you could treat it like this. What's the harm? Even if you're doing it on a big canvas, if you end up not liking it, it could be a fabulous underpainting. Or you can sand it back, or you can put some paper over it. There's lots of ways you can treat it. Okay, as I work into this, the next step, so the first step was zooming in, finding something abstracted. The second step was drawing these shapes. The third step is putting in the tones. And what I want to say about the tones is you are going to choose how close the tones are going to be to the original. So now that you've got these abstracted shapes, you've got a wonderful thing to play in. You can completely ignore that and come and play. So I'm gonna play and I'm gonna go, okay, I'm gonna make that shape also as dark as that. And remember I had mucked up or so-called mucked up because I wasn't copying it well enough. I had, um, this keeps on moving, it doesn't matter. So I had not got that light line against the dark line, which means maybe I've got an extra space on the page to try. And this is very much a, a case of looking at it and saying, do I like it? It's, it's quite hard to get used to um, whether you like it or not. Um, but go with your gut. It's not as difficult as it might sound. And you will begin to get a feeling for, no, that doesn't look balanced, or it does look balanced, or it doesn't look balanced, but I quite like it. All of those sorts of things. So I'm choosing to put a couple of other tones on. If you're playing with color, then play with color, but don't forget about your tones. Pretty much at the outset, for your thumbnail, don't play with color just yet. Just play with these tones. If you like um, Zentangles, remember we had an, uh, uh, an episode of um, Zentangles, I think. You can bring some Zentangle play into that, or mark making, whatever you want to call it. It is a nice idea to have more than one shape that has the same design in it for an abstract. So this is just one way of creating an abstract, okay? This is not the way. There are many, 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 many ways. Can you see that it bears no resemblance whatsoever to leaves? And that is this was just the starting point to move into something abstract. You don't need to color in everything. You might even say to yourself, I actually don't want shapes at all. Let's see if I can come up with a, um, another photograph. Let's put that one down. Now that hasn't got any shapes. It's just got, well, it's got tiny, tiny shapes. Can you see the tiny square in there? Let's see if we've got a bigger one. Now that looks too much like a scene for me. But if I put it like that, can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. I might just quickly turn that into, I'm liking my square frames at the moment and certainly in Australia there are lots of 
shops that are selling square frames, little square white frames. You get them at the $2 shops. I'm sure South Africa and Namibia and other places have got similar um, things, um, little frames and square is very, very useful because no matter what size your picture is, you can always fit it into a square frame and just determine what size border to leave. But I digress. So I'm looking at that and I'm not working with shapes now. I'm just working with marks and I've got lovely marks going downward there. And then I've got some marks going across and what else do I want to do and then I've got some marks doing that so I'm choosing what I want to do I quite like that, even if I say so myself. Okay, so that is slightly different to that, but they're both abstracted versions of what you've seen. You can, of course, turn them another way. Oh, that looks pretty cool now. That looks like some sort of cave suggestion, maybe coming from the Pilbara or something, or maybe... I've got that in my memory. So when I say things, abstracts are based on observation, I don't only mean direct observation that we've been doing from this. I also mean the fact that you have been to places. You have parts of the landscape seeped into you. You have flowers that are, that you've observed, that you live with, and they are part of your collective ideas in your head and when you start doing this sort of thing they come out so regardless of whether you think you can or think you can't you can um, and regardless of whether you think you actually have to observe some observe something like this even if it's coming from your imagination your imagination is based on previous experience and previous observations um, and again what I said was your observations might be visual they might be auditory oral oral um, singing all of, all of those sorts of things so putting your shapes of tone in is your um, or putting shape um, putting tone in they don't necessarily have to be dedicated shapes like that that is your third step. The fourth step was and is turning it every which way. Now, that for me is as simple as it is for those four steps. You can take it to as many steps as you like. You can, in fact, take your little viewfinder. I'll take a bigger one. Where's my bigger one? And find another view in a work that you've done already. So that's an abstracted view of an abstracted view. And I'm going like that and I'm looking there and I'm saying to myself, oh, I really like that. That would make a really cool abstract landscape, which becomes a semi-abstract. So you can take this idea and go and go. It's a bit like mirror against a mirror, reflecting and reflecting and reflecting. So that is my suggestion to you for how to go about abstraction without being scared of it. Certainly, if you do lots of little ones like this, there's no danger either. I mean, I don't think there's ever a danger when you're doing something like this, but somehow our brain says, Yes, you're gonna, there's a danger of you stuffing it up. There's a danger of you doing something dreadful. There's a danger of you wasting paint. And I heard a lovely quote, which was, the only wasted paint is the paint that's still in the paint tube. Okay, so don't keep your paint for special. Don't keep your um, 
your colors for special. Um, they for doing this. They for doing all of this. The next picture was, this actually comes from my book. So I wanted to show you what happens if you zoom in on your own work. So we zoomed in on that, um, that nude. Oh, I zoomed in on that nude, but it was already pretty abstracted. So what I wanted to show you was, this is not an abstracted work, but let's see what we can do with it. Let's rotate it to start off with. So I'm, I rotated it just once. And again, I am zooming right in. Now there you can still see its bottles. But what happens if I move it over there and I zoom in again? How about that? Is that exciting? It's, it's, it's interesting. I don't know whether it's exciting. Let's see if we can find another bit. Oh, that looks much more interesting. I quite like that as an abstract. So as soon as you zoom into something, you find different parts. Okay. And you don't have to keep it like that. You can make that darker and lighter as I've shown you on the sketches below. Um, but that is the idea. I quite like that. I might turn that one into, a, into an abstract. And you can click save. So all of you should have that simple um, software. And also on your phones, most phones have got a zoom in thing so that you can do this on your phones as well. Lovely to see you. And I wish you a fantastic weekend. Hope you're doing something lovely. And to all of you, it's goodbye from me. And of course, get drawing. Bye-bye.